I want Manda. Welcome back to our channel and thank you once again for joining us in this another day in the life of living on Autistic Edge. I am Terry and Elaine, proud autism mom. And we are here to share with you tips and tricks of how we navigate through our journey right here on Autistic Edge. Today we'll be talking about verbal starter. Now you will hear phrase like verbal starter, verbal cue, or verbal prompt. They're one and the same, they have been used interchangeably. What is a verbal starter really? Now a verbal starter, it's a word or a phrase that is being used to assist someone to formulate a response. Now it's commonly used in speech therapy and it's also commonly used with persons who are struggling with their expressive language. It provides a gently nudge to encourage a response. That's what it does. Verbal starter is a great technique and it can be used to enhance the quality of our conversation with our nonverbal children or children on the spectrum. By using them effectively, we can create a more engaging and productive and supportive environment for our children. Some children on the spectrum struggles with expressing their thoughts, expressing their feelings and even their needs. And this can be a real big challenge, big, big challenge. It's challenging for the children or the individual it's and we are talking about our children here on the autism spectrum right it's challenging for our children and it's challenging for us as parents because it does create and for caregivers teachers and anyone who has to deal with these children no it it provides a bottleneck to communication because if they are not able to express their needs which is most common then it's going to be frustrating for them it's going to be frustrating for us as well as parents in understanding them. When a child has their basic need and they are not able to communicate, it can be really, really, really challenging. It can be frustrating. It can be heart rending. Alex Xavier is popping up some words. One and two words are popping out here and there. And we are seeing here the importance of consistency continue to work on the strategies we we continue to do we continue to do a lot behind the scene right so we continue to work on the strategies we continue to use these strategies in our communication with Alex Xavier and we are getting some real real excellent you know response from Alex Xavier a great example for a verbal starter is carrier phrase you may have heard this term before and if you haven't heard the term before, that's fine. That's why we are here learning. And as I study these, as I research these techniques, and as I have used these techniques for myself and find them to be very useful, I am definitely going to be sharing with you. Now, carrier phrases are a great example for verbal starters. Now, what are carrier phrases? Carrier phrases are like a two word um it's a two word phrase and it can be a three word phrase too so phrases like i want i like i need i see right now these are quick jump starter to a sentence or a conversation all right depending on how you're actually using it now it's it's a great way to start reading because when you get the child to learn words like i see um want uh like once they learn those sight words they can put them to sentence to form carrier phrase so if you are teaching some pictures or you're teaching some words so say for example you're teaching 80 words and you have a hat you have a cat you have a mat now a common carrier phrase to this could have been i see a cat I see a hat. I see a 
mat. Now, the common phrase there is the IC. So here you can get your own definition of what the carrier phrase is. So it is a phrase that is used to begin most of your sentences and the difference would be that ending word. In a speech therapy setting with a child who is popping out like a one word or two word, which is what Alex is doing now, we, the, the carrier phrase is a great way to get the conversation started. All right, so if he wants something, we can use carrier phrase like I want, and you use this to satisfy his needs, right? So he can, I want. So if you're teaching the phrase I want, and after repetition, no, repetition deepens impression, right? And we find that repetition is great in speech therapy. Now, we have talked about the importance of repetition in this video here. So you can go back and check out this video, the importance of repetition in speech therapy. Now, what you find as we go along by repeating the I want, I want, they began to know the phrase. They began to use the phrase more frequent. And what you find is frequency in using the phrase also develops their fluency. All right, you see where I'm going with that. All right, so I want, and we introduce what is it that they want. Now it helps them to verbalize. Now how you use it, start a phrase. We are going to demonstrate just now an example of how we use the carrier phrase or the verbal prompt or whatever you want to call it or the verbal startup. As the child go along, what you can do is to gradually make your starter phrase minimal. So initially you may say, I want, and you allow them to finish the sentence. Now, as you realize that they are gradually catching on to whatever it is that they want, then you can allow them to use more for, more words from the sentence. So rather than you saying the I want, now you will drop off the want and you will say I and allow them to finish the sentence, want, whatever it is that they want. And then after a while, when they are now confident, they are able to use the sentence on their own, you can give a more mimicking prompt. So because remember, you know, it's difficult to get out the language. It's difficult for them to verbalize. So there are times when parents, we may be saying to them, use your words. No, I do that sometimes. I must be honest. I do that sometimes. And I'm trying my best to work away, to move away from telling him to use his words, right? Because sometimes I will say to him, Alex, I know you know the word. Use your word. But then guess what? it's very difficult for them to use their words. And that is why we are doing what we are doing. Telling them to use their words is more like you are reprimanding them for using their words. So rather than telling them to use their words, encouraging them by doing the verbal prompt, right? So either you, if you want them to say the sentence, you say, okay. So you mouth, mouth what you're gonna say. So you're gonna say, that is an indication of the I, and they will come out with the I, okay, one, and allow them to finish the sentence. That's more an encouragement, and you doing that with them, encourage them to come out with the words. And then after a while, as you gradually, so, so guess what, guys? We remember, we are coming from no words with Alex Xavier. We are coming from no words when Alex wasn't saying anything, and Alex was doing echolalia. Now, Alex is able to do a few things. He's able to now tell you when you want to go to the bathroom. He, he is able to tell you if you want water. And guess what? Sometimes he asks and sometimes he don't ask. So, therefore, you have to encourage the language. And it's best to use things that they need. Things that caters to their feelings, their thoughts, their immediate needs. They will find that more important because these are things that they're going to do. So, guess what? It's always good and safe to work with the foods with Alex Xavier because guess what? Alex loves him food. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to demonstrate the use of a verbal prompt with a slice of watermelon. So you may find that I may say less rather than saying I want. I may just say I. 
to start the sentence and allow him to finish it as well as i may just mimic the beginning of the sentence and then he may know what to say and that is progress because guess what if i don't have to use the carrier phrase anymore that's improvement if he's able to say everything let's see what he's going to do now i have here a piece of melon do you want melon can't man. all right i want you to ask for the melon man. so you're gonna say i want melon come on here we go ready come on man. i want man. Man. melon yeah. what's 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 it what's the magic yeah. word what's the magic yeah. word please please very good <laughs> all right you want to do that by yourself say come again i want man yeah. very good all right can you do the full sentence now come on say i want man melon you want to add please i add peace melon please all right and what do you say what do you say when you get your melon what do you say thank you you're welcome mm -hmm. can i get a piece mm -hmm. Mm. Thank you. Mm. That's it. Mm. All right, great. So we see Alex using of his words here, right? He was able to say the sentence. So we started out with the I want. Um, you saw where we were doing the verbal prompting. So we give the I want. So that is to ensure that's a carrier phrase and that's a good starter. And we help him to finish the um the melon now he knows melon right and what we do by telling him that it's melon we are not telling him that it's melon because he doesn't know melon he knows the melon but we are telling him because we want him to be able to articulate the melon so you see he's able to tell her that it's melon the pronunciation may not be coming out correctly and that is where we continue to work on our letter sounds to ensure that he's able to pronounce and articulate the the letters properly right so the the verbal cue the verbal prompt our verbal starter whichever one you want to use you see the importance there of helping them to bring out the language so yes it's a jump starter to talk so try out the verbal cue with your child if you have one and two language and if your child has more words and they are not able to put even their thoughts together you can also use the verbal prompt to stimulate their thoughts or to help them to think through what is it that they are going to say if they have more words and they are able to say more things but they may not be able to start the conversation or start a sentence so what you can do open ending questions as well so if you ask them questions that's a verbal start as well when you ask questions and but that is for children who have more language so you know the level of your child and know the type of verbal starter to use for your child and guess what you may be doing this but you don't know you didn't know that that is a term for it yes that is the speech therapy term for that kind of technique verbal starter verbal cue verbal whatever you do so and this verbal cue or the verbal starter what it does is it it builds your child confidence it helps them to learn the language structure and it also helps to improve their communication skills so next time you try this out with your little kiddo and see how they come along with it drop a comment below and tell us how you're doing with your verbal starter or your verbal prompting so guess what next time don't tell your child to use their words encourage them by using the verbal starter and that will you know they will feel the love they will feel the encouragement they will feel the care and that will build their confidence once again thank you so much for joining us in this another day in the life of living on artistic edge Remember to be patient with yourself and be patient with your little one. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and make sure you subscribe. And hit that notification bell so the next time we put out another content, you will be notified.